All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It is a beautiful Thursday morning. This is the day the Lord has made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Top of the morning to you. I pray everyone had a peaceful night of rest last night. And we are excited about the um, brand new mercies that we're able to experience on this beautiful Thursday morning. And we give God thanks for it. What's going on, Brent Haynes? Good to see you this morning, man. You all listen. I am running a little a little behind. Um, you get up and you start spending time in prayer and time just starts moving, 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 moving. So um, let's go ahead and have, a, and have another word of prayer and let's get going with our conversation. Lord, indeed, we thank you and we honor you. We, 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 uh, we love you and we thank you for um, not just seeing us as workers, as servants, but you see us as your friend. This is the type of relationship. This is a relationship that you have established with us. And so we thank you. Um, we, uh, we, we cherish the fellowship and the relationship, and we thank you for it on this day. Lord, I, I pray for my brothers and sisters as they are getting up this morning, that we will have a heart and mind to love you and to follow you uh, on our journey for this day. And we give your name all the praise. Thank you for this, your word. Thank you for this conversation this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, hey, Tiffany, good morning to you. Good morning to you. So let's let's pick up where we left off. We are looking at John, Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19, as we are discussing um, which one are you. This is the, um, the encounter that Jesus has with these, with 10 lepers, with 10 lepers, and we have made our way through um, a lot of this. So I believe we are around verse number, um, let's say we have verse number 15, verse number 15, okay? And the thought for the week has been, which one are you? One of these men out of one out of 10, um, what's going on KG? One out of 10 um, turns, turns, turns back, to uh, address Jesus um, and to give him thanks. Verse 15 says this, one of them, one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus's feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Hmm. So we, uh, we were talking about this particular verse on yesterday very low percentage. What do you mean? Oh yeah, with one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And listen, that there, there's always, uh, it's always um, a remnant, a small percentage, a low number of people that are all that are really living uh, in a life uh, of gratitude and thanksgiving. Again, um, we started this whole thing of um, saying. Um, that we are one of the greatest barriers that we have as believer as believers is the barrier of conscious gratefulness. Um, conscious gratefulness and conscious gratefulness is the idea. What's going on, Dominique? Good to see you this morning, sir. Um, the conscious gratefulness is is the idea that um, we are we don't live in a state of awareness. Hmm. Um, we, we think that, um, uh, we, we wait on, uh, 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 a moment of awakening that this, this one, um, leper had, uh, and that moment of awakening is our consciousness of the, the, the greatness of God. And so I submit to you that we have to live in this space and place of being aware of how good God is at all times, even when circumstances uh, are not yielding, circumstances are not just this big boisterous moment of God doing something extravagant for us. Every moment is a moment of thanksgiving, right? Now, this this takes some, some training. We have to discipline ourselves in this, that if Paul can write that we should give God thanks in all things and for all things, there's some livability there. 
And we've got to figure out how to live in that place and space where we're willing to give God thanks for everything, right? It, it, it takes some discipline. It, it really does. Um, for how do I give God thanks when I found out that my father has cancer? How am I giving God thanks in that, right? So I'm, we're, I'm not thanking God that my dad has cancer, but if, if I don't live in a position of thanksgiving, then I will become frustrated and possibly angry with God for why did he not allow my father to get cancer, right? So we've got to figure, we've got to figure out how to hone in, figure out how to keep our hearts bent, our hearts turned toward God so we don't uh, respond to God in anger and even pissivity. But we are, but when our hearts and our minds are in a place of thanksgiving, it is a preparation of how we will, act. it shows us how we're going to act when the circumstances of our lives change. So when you have a man that's been living in pain and God heals him of this pain, the only response he has to the healing and deliverance of God is a response of thanksgiving. You see, all 10 were cleansed, but only one recognized the change and turned to give God thanks. Listen, 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 listen. Are you the one? Are you the one that's willing to put aside cultural norms to give God thanks? Are you the one that's willing to forego their, your plans, to forego all your ideas, to give God at least a few moments in your day, a few moments in your life to give him thanks? We cannot be so busy. We cannot be so enthroned with the things that we have on our spiritual agenda to check off that we miss these moments, these divine interruptions for us to give God thanks. Are you the one? And just like this, this, this one man, him coming to give God thanks was not, uh, didn't have anything to do with what, what, what the other nine were doing. It was his conscious decision. He made the choice to give God thanks. Now listen, everybody, we, we, this has to be where we live. We have to live in this place where we are willing to deny even cultural norms, even familiar family norms, family rituals, to live in this place and space to give God thanks. It's not going to make sense to everybody. So don't even get yourself all worked up. I don't know why they don't understand. They will never understand. They didn't live in your shoes. So you cannot expect them to understand why you are responding the way you are responding to God. They saw you go through it. They may have been walking with you, but they didn't live in your shoes. Therefore, they don't live in your praise. They don't live in your response to God. It is this man's response to God when he figured out, when it dawned on him, when he was awakened consciously to the fact that he had already been healed. And again, the passage says that he, um, in verse 15, when he saw he was healed, he had that moment of awakening, he came back praising God in a loud voice. So listen, we, we, we talked about this quickly on yesterday that when God delivers you from what was killing you, delivers you from the pain, the anguish that you were in, uh, instead of crying out as you did in pain, now your cries turn into cries of praise. When we recognize and consider the power of God and consider where we were and we realize where we are today, we have no other regard but to, with, with, with a loud voice, turn and give God praise. Yes, yes, because we know that no one did it but God. Are you the one that in your personal and in corporate praise, are you the one that's, that's willing to thank God? For you really recognize how far off you were. <laughs> and get this, not only that, but he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. 
I remember I, we, we discussed on yesterday that we have to live in this uh, live in this place where uh, we do not allow people to dictate the 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 limits of what we'll do for God. And people will say, "Well, it doesn't take all that." Well, it may not take all that for you, but you you you, you were not there. Those moments where where um, drowning in tears, going to sleep. You were not there. You were not there when the pain of disappointment of prior decisions were overwhelming. You were not there. So since that person was not there, that person does not have the right to speak into your life telling you that you're doing too much. Uh-uh. Remember I told you yesterday, tell them to shut up? Shut the door, shut your mouth. You don't have a you 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 don't have the right to speak to this. Verse number 17 through 19. And we're gonna hang on this for the rest of the day, and then we'll close out on this tomorrow. The new one percent. Yes. <laughs> I like it, man. Yes, sir. Um I, I have to use that for if I preach this again, the new one percenters. I like that. In verse 17, it says, Jesus asks, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? He had, has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner. Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. All right, so are you the one who conquers fear? Uh, again, the end of the verse in 19 says, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. So in order for um, uh, for Jesus to say, your faith has made you well, that means that this man must have been living in the opposite of faith, that he was living in fear. And I can, I can understand that. I mean, he was in pain. And when you consider um, what leprosy looked like and how it, it, that bacteria destroyed um, from the inside out, and limbs would fall off this 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 odor there was a hideous odor um from those that 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 were sickened with this disease of leprosy so the, the, there are so many um um levels and places where this fear was was rooted right he could have been fearful not knowing when he was going to actually die what part of his body was going to fall off next fearful of if anyone in his family had become infected by it. I mean, there, there are a lot of areas of, uh, of fear, where legitimate fear this man could have had, um, which is the same place for us. There are many areas where we can become fearful. Now listen, fear is a natural emotion. Yeah, it's, it's fear that always warns us about the next thing. It's fear that warns us about fire. So fear in and of itself is not a bad thing. Yet it's when we take on a spirit of fear, as if to say everything that we encounter, there is a, a, a legitimate backup about it. We're in fear of it. We don't have a spirit of fear. We have a spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind, not a spirit of fear. So but this man was living in fear because he was in continuous pain. Um, for whatever those areas are in our lives, we must be willing to turn them completely over to God and not give in to a spirit of fear regarding any situation. My children are getting older, and if I'm not careful, I can give in to this to to a spirit of fear because I don't know what's getting ready to happen in their lives. I don't know how long I'm going. I, I will be here to live with them and guide them. No, 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 Lucy. We're not going to give in to a spirit of fear about that. The fear of the unknown, the, the, the fear of the past. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to leave our hearts and our minds open to trust God. And when this man turned back to give God praise, he opened himself for the releasing of that fear. Yeah. Some of us have fear regarding our finances. Uh-uh. We're not going to do that. We will continue to make wise decisions. We will continue to give unto God. 
um, what 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 we what he what has been placed on our hearts to give in its consistency. We will we we will not allow um, um, the economic system of our world to make us go into fear. No 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 no, Lucy. No, we recognize that our provision is gone, not our jobs. <laughs> David says, I once was young, but now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor its seed begging bread. We have to find peace in that, right? So, so, so in, the, in, the, in the quest of this man's healing, he is delivered from fear. His fear now turns to faith. Again, Jesus says, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. So he went from only being healed physically to now being made well, made well spiritually. Hmm. So that leads us to see that there is always more that God is trying to reveal to us that God wants us to experience from him. The nine of them, were, they were healed from leprosy, but their hearts were not, were not healed yet. This man is healed from leprosy and receives deliverance from his sin. Hmm. Now, are you the one that's willing to conquer your fear? And we conquer our fear by turning our lives completely over to God. There have been many of us that we've been healed from certain things. Cancer, I mean, just many illnesses. We have been healed from the illness, but we keep falling back into these different states of depression and anxiety and fear because we have not given our complete um, lives over to God. Yo, that's the challenge, because it's uh, we all have had we've experienced different pains and setbacks. We 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 could pull out our own violin and have our own slow music, play our own slow music, and waddle in it. We we can do that, or we can see God in it with us. We can see ourselves trying to endure and handle it by ourselves, and we don't have the capacity. Our shoulders aren't strong enough to do it, or we can see God in it with us. And as we go, we're giving God praise for the newness of his mercies that we're experiencing daily. This is all about your perspective. It's all about whose lenses are you looking through. And the challenge for us is to see life through the lens of God. And I know it's not pretty all the time. No, we live in a fallen world, a fallen state. So it's not going to be pretty all the time. But when we look through, through the lenses of God, we're able to see God's perspective about it. That although I'm in this situation, it's an ugly situation, what is it that God is revealing to me? What is it I'm supposed to, uh, the awakening moment I'm supposed to have in this current situation? And I'm telling you, when we, when we change that lens and we start seeing this through the lens of God, God is trying to reveal something to us. In this divine um, uh, moment with this pandemic, what is God revealing to you about yourself, about your family, about the ministry you are a part of, your ministry? What is he revealing to you about your life? These, these, these divine interruption moments. What's going on? Are we caught up in the moment of what we think we're missing out on? Can't be. Or are we caught up in the moment that we're seizing this opportunity? Writing things. Yeah. Putting business plans together. Writing books. Writing journals. Writing devotionals. Spending time, literal time, just with God. With the lights on, with the lights off, or with your heart open. Just listening in to what God is saying. These divine interruptions are purposeful. And you can see well, over 100,000 people have died in the United States. I, I'm with you. Um, I, I've been praying for people like you have. 
But am I going to allow this moment to make me um, become bitter with God because people are, 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 have died? No, 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 no. Since I am still alive, what is God trying to reveal to me? What is he saying to me about how I'm supposed to be responding to him with my life? The text says, um, Jesus asks, asks um, three questions. He says, the first question is, we're not all 10 cleansed. Then the next question is, where are the other nine? <laughs> and then the third question is, uh, has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Three, three outstanding questions. First one, we're not all 10 cleansed. Now, Jesus goes uh, from talking to the 10 lepers to talking to everybody else around. So he includes everybody in this. I need y'all to understand, he, he, he includes those that are in the proximity because he, he says, no, we're not all 10 of them cleansed. So this, this allows us to know that Jesus knows, God knows what's going on. It was purposeful for all 10 to be cleansed. Yeah. All 10 were clean. All 10 were cleansed, but only one came back to give God thanks. Are you that one? That's all we've been trying to talk about this week is, uh, is are you that one that you are willing to turn and give God thanks? Um, has no one turned to give God praise except this foreigner? Now, you know, the issue with this is this man was a Samaritan. So we're trying, we, we, we can deduce that possibly the other nine were, were, were Jewish, Jewish by heritage, Jews by heritage. But the only one that came to give God thanks was the person that came from a culture that was away from God. One of the things that's always been interesting to me is that um, um, those persons that grew up steeped in, 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 in Christendom, in, in, in the Christian religion, seem to be sometimes the harder ones um, the, uh, to literally turn everything over to God. But it's those that had lived far away from God, that didn't know anything about um, the church and, and Christianity, that when they hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, they are quicker to turn towards God. Um, for me and my experience, um, the, the, the years where I was not walking completely in faith with God, uh, my eyes were looking at people that were supposed to be these, these big persons of faith. And they had all this extra stuff going on. So it made it diff more difficult for me to trust God by looking at them, right? So I had to work through that. But I have seen later on in life that those persons that did not have family members that were in the faith, it, was something, it seemed to be a little easier for them to trust, easier for them to trust God because they didn't have to work through all the drama of what Christian folk do. Isn't that interesting? So this man that was a foreigner, that was a Samaritan, turns his life over to God. And God, he is rewarded by Jesus saying to him, rise and go. Can remember the man threw himself at Jesus' feet? Jesus says, come on, buddy, get up, man. Come on, get up. Go. Your faith has made you well. Isn't that beautiful? And I believe it is the same token for us today that God wants us not to come out of spirit of worship, but now our spirit, this spirit of worship is who we are. It's not just one moment of Thanksgiving. We live in this place of Thanksgiving. And Jesus says to him, uh, keep your heart right. Keep on giving me thanks. But now go get on up. You need to go and take this to, 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 to other people need to see that you are that you are healed. Arise and go. Is that what the Lord's saying for us today? To stay in this place of thanksgiving? But don't just keep it confined to this one moment. Walk this thing out. Live this thing out. That we live in gratefulness. I know it's going to be, it might be difficult because. Um, we still have the pains of this world. People are still coming up sick. It may not be with COVID, but other diseases. We're, we're still dealing with, with uh, relationship issues. We're still dealing with um, financial issues. 
But even in the midst of all of these issues, I still hear the power of the Lord saying, arise and go. Stay in this place of gratefulness. Now take this gratefulness with you and tell everybody about the great God that has exposed himself to you. This is our challenge, everybody. We have a decision. We have a choice to make. Will we be the one that gives God thanks and praise? Or will we just be caught up in what in the one thing and not experience the totality of who God is and who God is trying to expose himself to be in our lives? Hey, Miss Anita, good morning to you. Which one are we? So I challenge us to be the one like this one that was healed, to turn to come back and give God praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. And it is our choice. We choose to worship you. We choose to lay it all on the line. We choose to give it all to you. When we recognize the fact that you gave us your very best through Jesus Christ, we won't hold anything back from giving you our very best. So Lord, we thank you. Thank you for allowing us to have these moments of awakening when we realize that there is more than we, that we can be doing and we give it all to you. And as we're walking this out, Father, we know that you will make it clearer for us. Therefore, we choose to be obedient. We choose to trust you for this journey. So we thank you and we love you. Father, I pray your choice blessings over your sons and daughters today, that as we look at life through your lens, we will see your handiwork. We will see you at work in all things. And that allows us to stay focused on the last thing you told us to do, because we're not going to get caught up in what people are doing, what they're not doing. We're going to keep our hearts and minds focused on you. And we thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your love, Father. And as we continue um, going, leaving out of our homes, going into our workplace, um, doing all that we have to do, we will be led by your spirit that leads us into all truth. Every conversation we should be a part of today, Father, thank you for leading us into it. Thank you for putting your words in our mouths. Thank you for trusting us to speak what you speak to our hearts to say. We love you, Father. And we turn all of our pains over to you. No longer do we live in fear. But we make the choice to live by faith. We thank you and we love you. Father, bless us and keep us. May your face shine upon us and be gracious to us. If you're counting us upon us and give us your peace in Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody, have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for chiming in. We have one more day this week, y'all. This week is already over. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. Uh, to close out our time of uh, Mac in the morning for the week. Please prepare yourselves for corporate worship this weekend. As a matter of fact, we're celebrating Pentecost this weekend. Yeah, celebrating Pentecost this weekend. Um, so we're going to have a great time in our conversation of the weekend, conversation going into next week as we thank God for this day of Pentecost. Love you. Don't forget, you want to see my favorite person, you know what to do. You got it. Turn around. And look in the mirror. Have a great one. All right. Bye-bye. Bless you, KG. Thanks, Tiffany.